like a BB gun for grown-ups. Hello everybody, welcome back to my reloading bench. Don't mind the clutter. Uh, I've got several projects going on right now and don't really feel like cleaning up the bench to shoot this video. Uh, in our last video, did a little show and tell with the 375 Ruger guide gun and expressed a desire to develop a low recoil round for general practice. Something uh, doesn't have the kick of the full house rounds, would be less expensive to load and shoot, and allow me to do a lot more uh, shooting from different field positions, become much more familiar with the rifle, and more comfortable shooting it very fast in a, in a defensive situation against a brown bear or something like that. So did a bunch of research on low recoil rounds, reduced recoil loads for the 375. And you know, a lot of the data from 375 H and H crosses over to 375 Ruger. Now granted it's it's not exact. You can't just take it out of a book and follow it. You have to really start slow and, and work your way up carefully. But generally they're they're pretty close. Uh, case volume is pretty close on the two and uh, it gives you a good starting point. There are a few more traditional powders that can achieve lower velocity, lower recoil, but really all of the traditional powders uh, produced quite a bit more recoil than what I had in mind. It would still be along the lines of a, a hunting round. I ended up settling on Hodgton's Trail Boss for the powder. Now I keep this around, I always have some on hand, and I use it in my 454 Casul Ruger Super Red Hawk for plinker rounds. With the Super Red Hawk, this Trail Boss will fire a 250 grain cast lead bullet at about 800 feet per second. So like a really mild 45 Colt or you know along the along the lines of a 45 ACP. And in the Super Red Hawk Toklat 454, 250 grains going 800 feet per second. It's awesome. It's it's like shooting a 38 Special. There's very little recoil, so for practicing draw and shoot, it works great for that. Very inexpensive to load those rounds. Don't kick. My kids can shoot it. It's perfect for that purpose. So there's a lot of data out there on. Reduced recoil rounds for rifles using this Trail Boss powder. If you've never seen Trail Boss powder, it's pretty interesting stuff. It looks like a one pound can, right? Powder always comes in a one pound can. Here's H4350. Except this is such bulky powder that this isn't a one pound can. This is a half pound can, nine ounces. This is what it looks like up close. I can get it to focus on this white cup here. There we go. Looks like little donuts. Interesting stuff. That hole in the center, that little donut hole, means it takes a lot of this stuff to fill up a case. So on a 375 Ruger case, or any rifle case really, you want 100% case fill. And According to the instructions I've found, and you'll have to hunt online to find them yourself, so don't do what I do. I'm just telling you what I did. Verify everything for yourself. You basically take a, a spent casing, one that hasn't been sized yet. You want to have a primer in it so you don't lose anything out the back, although those probably wouldn't make it out the primer hole. You basically fill the case up and set the bullet in. And you want the bullet to just barely touch the powder when you're at your uh, your desired cartridge overall length. At that point, you have a full case, but it's not compressed. You don't want to compress this stuff. And also, you know, looking at what other people have used on 375 H and H, and I actually found a couple people in the forums that have have done these loads with 375 Ruger. Uh, 26 grains of Trail Boss seemed to be the ticket. And when I did the thing, filled the case, set the bullet in it, 26 grains seemed just about right. So, but I, of course I wanted to start out a little lighter. I've never shot this stuff in a rifle. 
um, you know, I wanted to make sure it was going to work good. I can't imagine it being over pressure and having a problem, but you know, anytime I'm going off, you know, anecdotal evidence or, you know, it's just weird. So I wanted to start out a little light. So I decided for the bullet, 235 grain spear hot core. These are just about the cheapest, I should say least expensive 375 caliber bullets you can get. And they're a damn good hunting bullet. I mean, it's, I wouldn't want to push them really fast and shoot game because I think they would they would expand too much. It's just uh, it's they're a pretty soft lead bullet, um, copper jacketed. Here's what they look like: semi Spitzer, lead point. They're flat base. So I, I loaded up three different charge weights, 25 grains, 25.5 grains, and 26 grains using 235 grain hot cores and Federal Large Rifle Magnum Primers. This is pretty much the main primer I use for this rifle. I, I love the Federal Match Primers. This one's Large Rifle Magnum. Probably could have got away with standard large rifle primers. I don't think it would make any difference on this trail boss. So we loaded up those three charge weights, three rounds each. Uh, you know, we're not really worried about group size too much. Um, and we're not really worried about the numbers. It just has to shoot okay at, you know, 25 or 50 yards because that's the kind of practicing, that's the kind of shooting we're going to be doing with this round. So let's head to the range. Check it out and see how they did. And 1607. All right, guys, I could not be happier with the results. Group size was fantastic at 50 yards. We shot a 0.54 inch, 0.73 inch, and 0.59 inch groups at 26 grains. Worked great. Standard deviation of only 3.3. Extreme spread of only 8. Now, granted, it was three rounds, but that, that's awesome. And velocity was 1606 for the average. That's exactly what I was hoping for, for a round like this. So soft on the shoulder. I mean, it, it was like shooting a 223 in a full-size bolt gun. It's virtually no recoil at all. I had originally purchased 100 rounds of these hot core bullets. And in load development, I really couldn't get them to shoot well with traditional powders. Um, usually H4350, Pretty much anything I load for this rifle with H4350 shoots pretty darn well. This rifle was not shooting the 235 hot cores very well at all. It was shooting two, three inch groups and tried different primers, tried some different things. And I just chalked it up to, you know, this, this rifle likes heavy bullets. And I've said that before. It shoots the 300 grain and 350 grain bullets extremely accurately. Not as good with the 270 grainers and not very good at all with the 250 grain bullets. When I saw that the 235s weren't shooting well, I figured, well, you know, that's that's just this rifle. It likes the heavies. I'm okay with that. I don't, I'm not going to shoot a lot of light bullets anyway. But I had all these bullets on hand. I had a bunch of them left. It's like, I'm not going to use it for a hunting load. I might as well work up some plinkers, which kind of led to this whole thinking with the trail boss and everything. I wanted to shoot those up get rid of them, use them up. And uh, I'll be damned, I'm going to have to buy some more of them. I had about, I had about 30, 35 rounds bullets left. So I'm going to load them up with 26 grains of Trail Boss and have a box full of plinkers. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to order a bunch more of them. Um, they're, 
they run about 35 cents a bullet which it, the, the most 375 bullets start at about 55 cents for cheap ones and go up to a buck buck 50 two bucks for a bullet for good ones so the fact that i'm getting really good accuracy and it works fantastic awesome i'm using these bullets up and i'm getting a bunch more of them and the next load i want to work up for this rifle is with a mid-weight bullet and as i've mentioned before i have a decent supply of these barns lrx 270 grain bullets got a good deal on them haven't been able to get them to shoot great i'm going to try them with h4350 see how that works these would be an outstanding mid-weight hunting bullet with a good ballistic coefficient if i can push these up around 2700 2750 feet per second this will give this rifle virtually identical range characteristics to a 308 Winchester as far as trajectory bullet drop and everything like that. That'd be fantastic. That'd be able to make this rifle extremely versatile. You know, with the 350 grain bullets and the 300 grain bullets, it really limits the range because the amount of drop. You get out there 100, 200 yards, it really starts dropping. You know, with the 350 grain bullets, it's it's a 200 yard gun um, i really wouldn't shoot farther than that at game without doing a ton of practice and you know the velocity is already pretty slow with those really heavy bullets so 27 2750 with a 270 grain bullet with a high bc that'd be outstanding i'd be able to stretch it out as far as i care to uh three four five six hundred yards even not really what I do with this rifle. I've got a five pound power scope on it, so it's by no means a long range rifle. But being able to comfortably shoot three or four hundred yards, that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes that's necessary, and if I'm well practiced and comfortable and have a round that's up to it, it's not out of the question for me. I've said before most of the moose that are killed in Alaska are killed well inside of a hundred yards but that isn't always the case you know if you see one standing out there broadside at 400 yards it'd be awful nice to be able to take a poke at him if that's all the closer you could get thanks for checking us out everyone we're really having a blast with this if you like what we're doing please hit the like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you next time